still on his feet inside the 20, 15, 10. He's in. Touchdown, Ram. Allen trying to toss it for Yarbrough. Touchdown! Wow, what a catch. Cuts at the box. Ball loose, and Dukeman catches it for a slow. Step up, gets hit as he throws. Look into the end zone. And Touchdown, Bruins. What a catch by Alexander. 10, 5, touchdown. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, A.J. Turner. And here it comes, the Cougar Nation. Northern region champ. The Game Day Broadcast Network is proud to present high school football. This exclusive broadcast is being powered by Integrated Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy. Get back in the game. The game of life. Manhattan Pizza. Now serving Ashburn, South Riding, and Leesburg with the best dang pizza in the world. Verizon Wireless. The official wireless provider of the Game Day Broadcast Network. Diamond Sports Training. Train with DST Performance today. Bellator Sports Memorabilia, the premier sports memorabilia store in Northern Virginia. EndZoneCamera.com, the most efficient and affordable end zone camera system on the market. The Spine and Joint Health Center, offering patients superior results-oriented care. Proudly serving Northern Virginia with the finest spine and joint care. Quarterback University, take your skill to the next level and enhance your future today. By Max Muscle Sports Nutrition. Max Muscle, partners in health. Atlanta Bread Company of Sterling. Come for the food, stay for the culture. Welcome to episode two of Game Day All Access for the 2013 football season. I'm Andy Hayes, joined alongside Bruce Bornart, Taylor Jensen, and uh, the usual partners in crime back again to talk about week two of the 2013 football season. This this was an interesting week, fellas. Your quick thoughts on how it all unfolded. First, you do a great job keeping those numbers together. I, I actually Because paused. week one was, and game two and all that kind yeah. of stuff, it's hard to follow. I, I, I want to see what you do when we get in double digits. I was shocked because, you know, the weeks don't follow along with the shows. Right. We're always one week ahead in the season versus one... Whatever. I'm, I'm surprised lost. Bruce is this sharp right off the bat. Bruce just I mean, had, how about that? Bruce just had some food. He's good to go. He's, he's revved up, and so are we. And let's go ahead and rev up the rewind looking back at last week's games. And we'll start it off with the game that Bruce and Taylor called. And this is your this is your team now, Briarwoods, Colonial Forge. We hyped it as a potential upset alert for the Falcons. Didn't turn out that way whatsoever. Briar Woods really making big plays. And it was an interception return for a touchdown from Chris Larko. Melvin Holland had a 90-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. And overall, this team for Briar Woods just kind of on cruise control right now. 31 straight. Bruce, your thoughts on this win? It, very nice win for Briar Woods, but you can see the effects of graduation and the players that they lost off of past two state championship teams. They're In certain positions, you can tell – Right, Taylor, that they're looking for somebody to fill slots that have been vacated. Yeah, there's still some people that need to step into some new roles as leaders on the field for for Briarwoods. I mean, obviously you've got Trace McSorley. I mean, he's a guy that has only lost three games since his freshman year of high school. But you've got to have guys on the defensive side of the ball step up other than him. Someone like a Matt Rowland or even a Cam Serenade, he was good on the defensive line. Someone's got to step up. I think that they've got guys that they would like to get to that point, but there's still some growing pains there. But nonetheless, I mean, Briarwoods is still Briarwoods. I mean, they are a contender, but you would like to see the leadership emerge at some point. Point. Let me throw a name out there for you to keep an eye on. Brandon Barksdale. It's a new name at Briar Woods. He's a junior defensive lineman. Keep an eye on that. Listen for that name. I will do so. How about this? Uh, they got a tough task ahead here. Loudoun County coming up. We'll talk about that game in a little bit. But 1-0 for Charlie Pierce and the Falcons here against uh, what we would call a contender team. I mean, this is Colonial Forge. Year in and year out, they're in it. So answered by the Falcons, I would say you guys said don't doubt them. I think you're starting to be proven right here. All right, moving on to the next one. Chantilly and Robert E. Lee. Now, this one, you had to have some good neck muscles because this game was going back and forth with unbelievable plays. I'll tell you what, if you want to watch a great highlight reel, go back and watch this game. Robert E. Lee, 22 points, 61 for Chantilly. Now, 
that seems to be the magic number for the Lancers right now. They gave up 61 to Edison the week before, 61 to Chantilly. Chargers get off to a 1-0 start. I'm getting a little scared here because we're we're thinking a lot alike now. I mean, <laughs> Taylor and I talked about this the other day. How many teams can say in back-to-back weeks, not only twice in the same season, but back-to-back weeks, they gave up 61 points? Well, hopefully not that many. And I don't think the Lancers are real excited about saying that either. But in this game, lots of big plays. We saw the athleticism of Chantilly and the speed take over. Yeah, you know, you're seeing a lot of people say that the trend for football in general now is the up-tempo pace, almost like what you saw the Philadelphia Eagles last night. And, you know, you kind of see that in, in the way Lee plays. And even Chantilly, the way they played Friday night, it, it's more up-tempo. They still got the power there, but plays are starting to pick up. And the, you see the number of plays per game starting to increase. And I think it's kind of a fun way to watch a football game. You said it's a lot of highlights. I think that this game definitely showed that it, that tempo – it gives you no shortage of it. Yeah, David Kearns with a 95-yard touchdown run in this game. Uh, we saw the development, I think, in the passing game look a lot more promising than maybe first thought with a new quarterback coming in. David Sidnor was on the money. I mean, he had some great passes in this one. So his first start, actually, I thought was even better than what you should have expected from a first-time starter behind center for the Chargers. So optimism high over at Chantilly for good reason. Chargers with a big test coming up here this week on the road at Madison. We'll see if the Warhawks can rebound. But before we get to their game against Oakton, we'll start with Tuscarora and Woodgrove. Michael Burnett's Tuscarora Huskies off to a 2-0 and start. And they were led again by Noah Reimers with a 63-yard touchdown run in this game. It was 21-14. to Woodgrove played him tough. Josh Sweet, I mean, arguably one of the best, obviously, in the area. Same thing with Noah Reimers. This was a great game. In the end, the defense for Tuscarora saved the day and kept this game in the hands of the Huskies. You know, maybe because they're out in Western Loud and, and, and kind of you know, little ways outside of the, the focus or the focal point of our coverage area, this game, though, is emerging as one of the great rivalries, I think, in the area. And we talk about all the great ones. We talk about Chantilly-Westfield. We talk about Centerville-Chantilly. We used to talk about Parkview Broad Run, all that kind of stuff. Stonebridge, maybe West Springfield. Who knows? But you look at this game, and this the Mike Bowl, Mike versus Mike, is becoming a game to watch and a game to put on your calendar. It's one of those things you'd love to see them play more than once a year. Yeah, no question about it. Tuscarora with a chance to go to 3-0, and even after all of the injuries in the preseason. A chance to go to 3-0 and against Valley on Thursday night. Uh, it's a great start for Coach Burnett's club. He joined us this week on his weekly coaches show. Make sure you go watch that here on the network. And I think you'll be enlightened with what he had to say about the, the way these guys are playing out there uh, in the Husky uniform. All right, moving on to the next game. And listen, guys, I mean, I, I, listen, we've got plenty of good ones to talk about. Centerville and T.C. Williams, this was a game that we kind of thought was going to be a closer game. We thought maybe T.C. Williams, after the way they beat up on Oakton, would come into Centerville and this would be a great ball game. It turned out it was just the A.J. Turner show. I mean, this guy was unbelievable in this ball game. They beat them 44-16. to 16. This game wasn't even close. They scored 37 at the half waypoint here, Taylor. Statement win for Centerville. Absolutely. I mean, you look at the way T.C. Williams played Oakton. It got a lot of people's attention, especially in the Concord District, because that's kind of a measuring stick. You see how they do outside of their district. Man, I got to be honest with you. Centerville just put the brakes on on T.C. Williams. I mean, T.C. Williams won this game with a lot of confidence. You get a win over Oakton, who went to the Northern Region Championship last year, you feel pretty good about yourself. Centerville just put them right back where they, in their minds, belong. And you said it, A.J. Turner, just what a monster game he had. I mean, I, I don't think that there's anyone in Northern Virginia that can stop the guy, to be honest with you. Well, there's a kickoff return in this game, and he made several plays where they were plays of the weak candidates. There's a kickoff return where two guys have an angle on him, and he just runs right past him. And it just shows you how electrifying he is. And we'll talk more about A.J. here in a little bit. But that is one of the great uh, players in this area, and he stepped up big in this game. We were kind of talking last week that he didn't get enough touches against West Potomac. wasn't the focal point. Well, they corrected that in a hurry. So uh, Centerville improves to 2-0 and by week this week, the number one team in the power pole looking strong here, needless to say, as we start this this season. All right, moving on to the next ball game, The Oakton Cougars with an emotional win as they honor their former coach, Packy Purcell. They beat Madison 42-7. to 
And this was a game, and I called this last week. I told you guys the way they would play in this game was inspired, right? And, and that's what we saw. Had a kickoff return for a touchdown, an interception return for a touchdown. And Bubba Purcell obviously came back uh, to the office here afterward. He was very emotional. It was a great night to honor Packy. He was a tremendous person, a great coach, a great player, and a very important person in the community down there in Vienna. Um, this was a great way for Oakton to celebrate him. Bruce, your thoughts? Cougar Nation, I'm bowing down. I'm apologizing. Send all the humble pie, all the crow you want to throw at me. I will take it. What was I thinking? Taking Madison. <laughs> yeah. I, after I saw that, I, for a whole weekend now, I'm going, what? what duh. I, I don't know. What, what was I thinking? Well, it was, it just had a lot of things going for him. Oakton had some things to play for that night. And, again, they just typically don't lose that game very often. I mean, they're, they're very good in the Outback Bowl. Yeah, I, I mean, I was one of the people who was guilty of jumping off the Oakton bandwagon. I was, I was kind of with Bruce on that, and now I'm putting my foot in my mouth. I, I mean, you guys shut me and Bruce up pretty quickly. I, I'm actually really impressed with how Oakton played that game. I mean, you said inspired. They really did play inspired. And if you can kind of bring that mentality to more games this season, I mean, we could see what Oakton does every year. They seem to kind of get off to a slow start, and then out of nowhere, they just go on a tear. I mean, you can't say that they're not in the same position they are every year to do the same thing. Yeah, and there were, there were a couple of really cool moments in this game. Bubba Lamb, who wears number 26. Now, he'd be the last guy for Oakton to ever wear number 26 in the program. His uh, Packy's jersey number will be retired after this year. So Bubba Lamb has, you know, he's, he's playing with Packy's jersey number. He's the one that intercepted the pass and ran it back for a touchdown. Listen, it'll give you some goosebumps. Just watch our top ten plays here. This week, and, and again, I told you, you know, Bubba and, and uh, the Purcell family, obviously a very emotional night for them. Our heartfelt sympathies and, and uh, prayers go out to the family here, uh, who I know are still struggling. It's been a very devastating time for them. But uh, a great night for the Cougars and a great night for the Purcell family to honor uh, Packy Purcell. So a great win for Oakton. They even their record up at 1-1, one and, one, and that moves us into the Sharando martinsburg game. Now, Martinsburg, the three-time state champs in a row, they come down to Stevens City. This is kind of where, you know, Arrowhead Stadium, maybe you're thinking, was rocking a little bit. The horse, we know is Dane, right, is the name of the horse now. You keep changing. Every week you tell me it's a different name. I Somebody calls you. I think they're messing with you. Maybe it's Hank. I don't know. We, we have to go I back think it is Hank. Hank. I, I think track. they're messing with you. Right. So here's the thing. Sarando kind of felt like they had a, uh, had a shot at this game, and it was a closer game. It was 27-13. Martinsburg's still pretty tough. So they get the win. And Sharando takes their first loss of the season. But their schedule so tough. They will get better because of this game. They go on the road this week against uh, Washington, West Virginia. All right, moving on to Westfield. No trouble with South Lakes. The Bulldogs go down into Reston. And uh, they get big plays all over the field. Devon Burns with another punt return or another return for a touchdown. He's off to a great start. And uh, this Westfield team kind of, I'd say they're flying under the radar. But all the hype, Taylor, is about center and Chantilly. I mean, all the hype, Lake Braddock, we'll get to them in a minute, but what about Westfield? I mean, don't think Westfield hasn't noticed that. I mean, they do notice these things. They, they see the trends in, in high school football in the area, and they see how everyone is jumping on the Centerville bandwagon, me included. But they, they like to fly to the because they want to be the team that kind of has the chip on their shoulder, and they like to play like that. They're kind of the hard-nosed, beat them up type football program, and so when they meet Centerville, they're going to be ready to go, and I think they like being in this position, kind of just being overlooked, because it just gives them more motivation. I mean, you see them play against South Lakes, yeah, you kind of expect them to get that win, but once it comes time to play that Concord schedule, they're going to be looking to knock a few teams off. Yeah, and a key point here, Westfield yet to lose a regular season game under Kyle Simmons as a head coach. How about that? We're into the third season for him. So, tremendous team. Uh, don't sleep on Westfield. Again, we'll, we'll talk more about that here as we get going later on the show. Final game to talk about here. Let's kick it on. Lake Braddock heading out to Ashburn is the game of the week. Stonebridge hosting the Bruins. Number two versus number three. We knew something had to give here. What we found was that Lake Braddock was a lot better than, uh, especially up front, than we maybe first thought. I mean, they are really a good football team in the trenches. Jim Poitras quiet confidence, not talking a whole lot about his team coming in, saying, hey, we hope to be close. Well, they were just close. They ran out front in this game, and Stonebridge had to make a, a desperate rally at the end to make it close. Now, the Bulldogs did not play 
up to par. They didn't take care of the football. Uh, they didn't block extremely well, but a lot of that credit has to go to Lake Braddock. And I think the one thing we take away from this, Bruce, is that Lake Braddock is legit. Stonebridge will probably rebound quickly and be as legit as we thought. But this game really was more about Lake Braddock as a team than it was about Stonebridge not getting it done. I, I think you hit the nail on the head right there. This, this is, look, Stonebridge is going to be fine. You go back to 2000 when Stonebridge and Westfield opened. We talked about Westfield the last game. No more successful programs in the state or probably in this regional area of the country if you add up total wins, total losses for those two teams over the past 14 seasons now, or 13 plus a couple game seasons. I think Andy's right. This game is more about how good and maybe how little underrated Lake Braddock was or in, in a lot of people's minds, namely ours at game day, going into that game. I think, Lake Braddock, you want to talk about a statement game of the week, this is probably the game you pick. Well, there's no question that this was a win that could propel Lake Braddock even further along with confidence. I mean, I, you know, A.J. Alexander, Caleb Henderson, these guys, they don't lack confidence. Now, these guys believe they're the best team in the area. The way they've played to start the season, I'm not so sure – They don't have a right to say that. I mean, Centerville's played equally as well. This is the number two team in our power pool this week for good reason. They've come out, and they've been impressive. Taylor Jensen, uh, Stonebridge did not take care of the ball, as I said. They did not block extremely well up front. Coach Thompson talked about that on his weekly show. They've got Langley, who had an upset win over Yorktown last week. Can they rebound? Can they get ready? I feel bad for Langley. I mean, do you want to be the team that is going to have to face Stonebridge coming off of a regular season loss? I, I know I wouldn't want to. Stonebridge is going to come out with a vengeance because they really do believe that they should have won that game. Minus, if you take away those turnovers and some of the mistakes that they made, that could have been a different football game. Now, that's not a let, knock on Lake Braddock. Lake Braddock is legit. But I do think Stonebridge will be fine, just like Bruce said. And I think that they're going to, you know, they're having growing pains too, just like a lot of teams that graduated a lot of talent. Stonebridge will be okay. We'll give them some time to get into the rhythm. Langley, better bring your A game because Stonebridge is going to come in angry. All right, guys, that's it for our first segment here on this week's edition of Game Day All Access. Coming up next, it's Inside the Huddle. We'll be back right after this. Visit the Game Day Broadcast Network on Facebook to receive expanded coverage of high school sports in Northern Virginia. Facebook.com backslash Game Day Broadcast. And follow Game Day on Twitter. Visit Twitter.com backslash GBN Mobile and follow your favorite team with Game Day's exclusive television shows online at GameDayMagazine.com. Join the network today and make Game Day your home online. My name is Dr. Felix Yuska, and uh, both my wife and I own the Spineman Joint Health Center here in Fairfax City. Um, I'm originally from this area. I grew up and uh, um, went to Robinson High School. Uh, played football for the Robinson Rams there back uh, graduated in 91. One of the advantages that a student athlete has here is they always have the parent that always has access to me. So here in our office, we have access to, you know, ultrasound, muscle stem, Russian stem, things to strengthen, take the inflammatory response out of the of the joint process for, uh, for, for those athletes so that they recuperate much faster. At the Spine and Joint Health Center, we would like to be your team doctors so that we can go down this journey together, both on and off the field. The Spine and Joint Health Center, offering patients superior results-oriented care, proudly serving Northern Virginia with the finest spine and joint care. Welcome back to Game Day All Access here. Andy Hayes alongside Taylor Jensen, Bruce Bornarth. Our show today brought to you by Diamond Sports Training, the official home of the Game Day Broadcast Network here. Time now for Inside the Huddle. And we spin it over to our six foot ten quarterback to throw the ball to us here. Taylor, you're up. All right, here we go, guys. First one up. Fact or fiction. Concord overhyped. I never thought I'd hear those those two words used in the same sentence. Andy. Well, Bruce never likes to give facts. He, he's always a fiction guy here. But I think if you look at the Concord District as a whole, there's two different levels of this. There's overhype in the sense that everybody talks about it as the only great district out there. That's, that's not true. There are other great districts in and around the state of Virginia. Where they're hyped perfectly to a T is the, the competitiveness all the way through. That is why people compare the Concord to the SEC. That said, it's been since 2007 that the Concord District has had a state champion. So if it is as great as everybody talks about here, Bruce Bornorth, 
we should be seeing more state champions come out of that, that district. Don't you agree? It, it, no. It, it is as great as there is in this area. Yes, because they're not winning more state championships, you can't say that they are that they are overhyped. No, they're not overhyped. They are the SEC of the area, they, of the state when it comes to districts top to bottom. Well, top to middle now, I think. You're, you're right. It's kind of maybe the first year we're seeing where it's sort of split. But they're not overhyped, no. Well, I, I think, you know, obviously we're, we're kind of like, you know, everybody says the ES, ESPN is hyping the SEC all the time. I mean, we're tied in tight with the Concord teams, have been for a long time. And so we are a hype machine for them. And so in, in one sense, uh, you know, maybe it is a little overhyped. I mean, Lake Braddock certainly doesn't feel like, you know, that they get the same amount of hype as, as a Concord team. I mean, and they, they don't mind saying that. I mean, the Patriot District has been pretty darn good over the past five years. And the reason that maybe the Concord teams haven't won state championships is because teams like Lake Braddock, right? I mean, they, they went in there and knocked away a bunch of those teams from the Concord. So, you know, is it a little overhyped? Probably but it's a great district, so and that, that's how we answer that. So, All right, next up we got one of the, the newer districts that was just formed because of the realignment and everything, the Potomac District. Guys, is it underrated? I mean, you got teams in there like Briar Woods, Broad Run, Tuscarora. Is, is it underrated, Danny? I, I think you have to say fact right now. Broad Run is undefeated, quietly undefeated right now. Briar Woods is smacking people around, 31 straight. Tuscarora is undefeated. They're 2-0. You got Potomac Falls undefeated, and then you have Freedom, who's just kind of getting started here. But hey, this, this district is good. I mean, they've got some teams that have a shot in 5A here to make a run. And certainly with Briarwoods out front, but Broad Run and Tuscarora are going to give Briarwoods all they want. I, I think that's the key you said right there. 5A. Yeah, I think it is fact that they are underrated. But I think it, I think. That you change the word from underrated to maybe under-respected. I don't know that they get any respect from the other 5A teams. These are uh, Broad Run's been 5A for a couple of years, but Tuscarora, very young school, Briarwoods moving up to the 5A division. I think there's a lot of skepticism from the old 5A schools and 6A schools saying, yeah, you know, these are still the old double A schools. So I don't know that they're underrated, but I think they're under-respected. All right, Andy, I'm going to let you take this one after, Bruce, because I know you're going to have a lot to say about this kid. A.J. Turner, fact or fiction, best player in Northern Virginia. Bruce? Listen, I, I, I'm going to say I haven't seen him play this year, but I saw him play a bunch last year. I think it's fact. I think A.J. Turner probably is the best player in the area. I'm going to let Andy put him up on the soapbox and make the case for him in a little bit, but I'm going to throw an aim at you. Tim Settle. I know he's a defensive lineman. I know he's just a junior, but Tim Settle at – out in Manassas at Stonewall Jackson can make a run for the money. Well, the difference between, I mean, again, remember last year we were having this conversation about John Allen. And I said, hands down, he's the best football player I've seen in Virginia uh, over the past 12 years we've been covering sports up here. So, you know, I'm going to say this about A.J. Turner. He's the most electrifying player in this area on all sides of the ball. And what he brings to the table, he just, he's got something different. He's got a different gear than most other players out there. There are guys that are just as dynamic in one aspect of the game. I mean, Nick Scott at Fairfax, folks, if you haven't seen Nick Scott play, he, he's tremendous. So he's going to Penn State. I mean, Des Moines, Pearson, I mean, we've got some athletes out there that can say, hey, I'm as fast as A.J. Turner. But what he does offensively, defensively, and in special teams, nobody else out there. A.J. Turner, in fact, is the best football player in this area as a junior as a junior, he's the best football player. All right, guys, next up, we got something that a lot of people feel like needs to happen around here. You see a lot of high school football on ESPN nowadays. Fact or fiction, it's got to come to Northern Virginia. Oh, this is a fact. This is I'm taking it. I'm not even letting you give it to Bruce first. I want you to go <laughs> first because I'm is getting fact. in trouble in a minute. Listen, I, you know, I'm probably going to irritate some people in the 757, but they put on a game last week that was supposed to be a, a huge ball game, and it turned out to be a blowout. Listen, the, the football in Northern Virginia is every bit as good as it is in the 757. I don't care what they say down there. This area, I think, is even more competitive. You have a few teams down there. You've got a bunch of teams up here. Now, the rivalry games, and I'm talking about the crowds coming out, are every bit as good up here. I'm sick of watching ESPN go down to the beach area 
and play and, and, and set all that up there. Let, let's get a game up here. Let's get a Westfield Centerville. Let's get a Westfield Chantilly, a Lake Braddock Westfield, or a, a Stonebridge Broad Run. Those are games that ESPN should take an interest in. They're every bit as good as the games down in the beach. Uh, we've gone past the beach being the only place in Virginia that has great football. We're way past that point. So they need to take notice on that and get up here. Uh, I'm going to agree with Andy in this sense only that, yes, Northern Virginia football is just as good and just as competitive as Virginia Beach football. Now, this is where I'm going to tick probably 99.99% of you out there watching this. No, ESPN does not need to come to Northern Virginia. Spend a weekend on a Friday night after our local high school football game. Watch the California broadcast of high school football there. Watch the Texas broadcast of high school football there. Watch Florida broadcast. Even go up into the Ohio Coal Belt area, Pittsburgh area into Ohio. Watch high school football there. As good as we think we are in Virginia, we're not even close to that around the rest of the country. Hold on. I'm not (laughs) done. ESPN, if they're going to come to Virginia, yeah, you got to come to Northern Virginia. But you know, Virginia's not ready for ESPN to come yet. Well, they're coming to Northern, they're coming to... to, to Well, I'm disagreeing with that. They shouldn't be coming here at all yet. I think if you go to a Centerville or versus Westfield game or any type of Chantilly Westfield, games like that, they're every bit as good as the games that I've seen on ESPN, like the ones in Florida. And I lived in Florida, went to school in Florida for two years. I've seen their high school programs. These programs up here every bit as good. And, And I think the atmosphere up here takes the cake, too. To be honest, well, don't with you. don't get me wrong. I, I think it's great that they're going to, down to the beach. I, I think that's awesome, and co- commending the ads down there for pulling that in and dealing with that. It's a big headache for them, and it's good for our kids in Virginia to have that. But I think they need to start spreading it around a little bit. That's really my only argument. Well, I, I disagree with you 100. percent By the way, if they're I coming, totally disagree with you. If they're coming to totally. Virginia, then they need to come to Northern Virginia. I agree. Uh, I agree saying. with the comparison between the beach and the Northern Virginia area. You could take a, an all-star team from all of the state of Virginia and go play the best in California, get killed. I, I, don't, I don't agree with that completely. Come on, man. We've got the number one player in the, in the country playing out here. We've got, we had the guy last year who wasn't rated as the number one that I think was when it's all going to be said and done, John Allen out there. We've, we've got guys that are every bit as good as any other place in the country. We just don't get the respect out there from across the country by the recruiting experts that we deserve. But in order to get that, you got to have the big light shining on you. And that needs to happen here soon with ESPN. Well, so you watch, and you just let me know how many people are mad at me now. Oh, well, you don't have any friends anyways. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. All right, well, talking about <laughs> Northern Virginia being every bit as good as the rest of the state, going to go out to Ashburn. Ashburn's still title town. Bruce, fact or fiction? Fact. 100% fact. You look at that. Let's start with titles with district championships because they used to give trophies for district titles. They don't do that anymore beginning this year, which is a bunch of hooey as far as I'm concerned. But you look at the district championships in Ashburn, the regional championships in Ashburn, and the state trophies in Ashburn. Ashburn is title town still. Yeah, I'd like to see a place across the country that has what Ashburn has. I mean, you think about all the championships that have been won, all the trophies, all the rings. In a three-mile radius, they have three programs doing all of that. I don't think there's a place in the country that has that. That said, will they be title town after this season's up? That's really the question. I don't know about that. that that's that's up for debate. So. T- time will tell. Now, what, staying along the lines of championships, everything like that, teams do not have a shot with a rookie freshman quarterback. Andy, take it away. It doesn't even have to be a freshman. It just needs to be a rookie, a first-year starter. I think this is a fact. I, I think your chances of winning a championship. I'm not talking about winning games. I'm talking about competing for a championship. I think you're – your chances are slim when you have a new quarterback. I just think that, that guy has to be somebody at some point that wins a game. We have not had a question such a lock like this in so long. This is so pure fiction that it shouldn't even be allowed to be written down on paper. Look over the, the successes of, of rookie quarterbacks. You're sitting there saying simply – measured by state championships. That's baloney. Well, I'll give you two right now. Patrick Thompson, Trace McSorley, rookie quarterbacks that won state titles. Go along the rest of the way. Some of the other great quarterbacks in the area. How good were the Glennons when they were freshmen? 
How good was Michael O'Brien at Stonebridge when he was a first-year starter? How about Bren Renner when he was a first-year starter out there? How good did that team do? I think they probably did pretty good. And how about your favorite of all time, little Ross Matheny up at Sarando? How good did that kid do when he was a rookie? I have to admit here, I highly... I highly underestimated your memory. I, I really didn't think you could remember <laughs> last week. I, I'm just, I am very impressed with you. Right well, they now. say as you get older, like like <laughs> I am now, oh, it's, I can't remember what Andy brought me for dinner <laughs> tonight, but you go back a ways, I'm solid as a rock. I'm go ahead and concede this one I, to you. I, I think you made a great argument. I, I, I'm just very shocked that you could remember that many names. I, I think that's a game day first. That's got to yeah, be a I first. Mean, let's not keep hitting on it. Let's go. Keep moving. That's the end of them. Is that it? We're good. All right. Time now for our spirit battle this week. And, folks, we're excited about this one. Very rarely do we get to go out to a new place that's never experienced the game of the week in the game day broadcast network in a big way. That's where we're going Thursday night. The Falls Church Jaguars are hosting the Thomas Jefferson Colonials. So we have in our spirit battle here the hype squad from Falls Church Versus the Colonial Crazies. I don't even know if they're... I call Bruce Crazy, so I just put that on. There. <laughs> here's, the, here's the battle, right? We don't even know anything about the student sections at either side. We do know that the Twitter handle for the Hype Squad is up and running for Falls Church. they got a pretty decent football team. 1-0 versus 1-0. Bruce, who wins? For, by the way, I'm going to set this up for you. First game on their new turf at Falls Church. Coach Aziz says the kids are riled up. What do you think? I, you know, I think I'm going to go opposite with what my pick is going to be when it comes down to it later. I'm going with the home crowd in the new stadium at Falls Church High School. I mean, the way out there, the excitement out there. You, you look at, at, at TJ, and, and TJ are pretty smart up at that school, but they're coming from everywhere all around. I just don't know how many people are going to, after all of that, go home, go back, and go to a game. So you, you think they go home and go to study, and they're not going to come to the game on Friday? Is that what you're saying? Or Thursday? How many high school kids you know go on Friday night and study? <laughs> Thursday. It's a Thursday night game. Oh, they're not even going to school Friday. Come on. Think? So you're taking you're High taking schools are going to be a ghost town around here what Friday. What do you think? Oh, I'm taking Falls Church all day. I mean, you got the new turf. They, if the, the student section has a Twitter handle and they're hyped about it and the other one doesn't, I mean, that's all the proof I need to take Falls Church. Uh, so really what we're saying is we're calling out the colonial crazies here. To make something happen. Because we don't even know if you exist. I mean, we know about the hype squad. We just don't know if Thomas Jefferson has a crazy student section here. Are they going to be studying or are they going to show up to the game? There you go. I'm taking the hype squad too. This is a new era of football down at Falls Church High School. Look out. And the Jaguars are are for real. We'll talk about that in our picks of the week here. But that is going to be the, the spirit battle. Thomas Jefferson, jury's out. On you. Hey, our spirit battle each week now, sponsored by Atlanta Bread Company, right up here in the Dulles Town Center area. So if you come up here and want to do some lunch at Atlanta Bread and you tell them the uh, the game day broadcast network center, you show your student ID, you get 10% off of your lunch right up here at Atlanta Bread Company. We thank them for sponsoring our weekly spirit battle here on Game Day All Access. We'll be back with more coverage here on the Game Day Broadcast Network right after this. For us, we have uh, my oldest son. We have three boys who have come through here. My oldest is 13, so we've been coming to, started coming to the camps probably about seven years ago. It's really good for him. We just, this is his uh, home away from home during the summer, and uh, been real good for his confidence building. The counselors are great. Um, he interacts with them really well, and um, so when we've got the, each successive kid to get old enough to come here, um, and They've been really nice to, to let us come even a little early and do the full day camps for the younger guys. Um, same thing, you know, it's a real good confidence builder. They build up relationships with the coaches, and um, so that's how kind of how it all started. And then we've uh, brought them here for individual instruction, top notch, um, and brought teams in here as well. So this is the this best facility in the area, hands down. Um, for our money. Come by and visit Diamond Sports Training today where baseball season never ends. 
When ice and rest aren't enough, it's time for you to call Robin O'Connor at Integrated Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy. Integrated Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy provides Loudon and Fairfax with the finest physical therapy around. Hundreds of high school athletes have trusted Integrated Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy to help them get back on the field. Don't let that injury go untreated. Call Integrated Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy today at 703-724-7474 or visit us online at IntegratedSportsPT.com. It's where athletes go to get back in the game. on game day all access and right now it's time for our new segment called football 101 and today we spend a little time with tuscarora head football coach michael burnett talking about their pistol offense in football 101 this exclusive presentation of football 101 is brought to you by endzonecamera.com the most efficient and affordable end zone camera system on the market Hi, I'm Mike Burnett from uh, Tuscarora High School, and today I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about uh, just the pistol formation, our shift from the pro formation traditionally to the pistol, and go over one of our basic plays, which is our blast play, or often called an ISO play, um, and, and how we block it. Um, traditionally, you know, for the last uh, you know, seven years that I've been here, um, we're in what we call a pro-I formation, um, where we have our tight end, who we designate as a Y. Um, our receivers are, are wide out, our Z is our slot receiver off the line of scrimmage, our X is our wide out. Um, and then for a pro I formation that we've always liked to be in, we like to be in an I formation. Um, we've got our quarterback under center, hey, we've got our fullback behind him, um, and we've got a tailback behind him. And we've always liked this formation um, more than anything because we feel like uh, we can get more, more numbers. We think that we can run on either side. Uh, of the field um, and by formation and because we have a lead back um, that we're able to outnumber the defense most of the time uh, and be able to run to both sides and I think that's been a strength of ours we've loved it over the years um, but like everything else things change you know and for us this year um, it's been limiting to us when we want to throw the football um, and so uh, what we've transitioned to this year uh, which a lot of teams have across the country is the pistol formation and our pistol formation essentially what we're going to do to make it easier for us to go from running to passing um, is we go, we're going to take our quarterback and move him back to four yards okay? and we're going to keep our tailback right where he was now our fullback Okay, is going to be offset from one side to the other. Okay, so we could offset him to the to the tight end side, um, and that's basically going to be our new pro formation. Um, we can easily either motion him over or set him off this side as well. Okay, why we like this formation is when we go into our passing set and we take out our fullback and put in an extra receiver, we still feel now that we can run the ball to either side of the field. Okay, so we have the balance that we used to have with the I formation, but okay, we also now can throw easily out of it without shifting everybody off of the field. Um, and so that's the beauty of the pistol formation. Um, going through our base play, though, in, in our, to keep it simple, our plays are, it might seem like a lot for our players to learn, but it really isn't because the plays haven't changed. Um, this, our traditional play is our blast play or our ISO play. Um, and it's a very simple play. They call it an ISO play um, because you're going to have four down linemen. We see four. Sometimes you may see five. Um, but they line up. You know, this would be kind of a typical four-man front. Okay. And then there's typically, you know, we'll say we're in a 4-4 defense here, four linebackers. It could be a 3-5 uh, with three down linemen and five linebackers. Um, uh, but this, this tends to, this is what we run, so we practice against what we run a lot. The idea behind an ISO play for us is when we call it an ISO, we tend to call it blast. It's just a terminology. A lot of people um, have different names for it, but it's all basically an isolation play where what we're doing, okay, is we tell our lineman very simply, he's, you're, you're responsible for everybody but this one back, and we're going to isolate that back. We're going to get this block right here. Okay, now, it could happen a lot of different ways, um, but essentially, our linemen are responsible for everybody else. Okay, so typically what we'll do, okay, is we try to double team at the point of attack because we want to run the ball right in here. Okay, and that's our goal. All right, and in that's the case, our fullback is going to lead and isolate on that fullback, and our tailback is going to follow him. Now, okay, 
if you'd say, well, what if, what do you do if there's somebody sitting in here? Well, and that, if that's the case, we're still going to isolate, okay, that back, but we're just going to go through a different hole, okay, and the full, the tailback's going to follow the fullback. Now, what makes this play work, it's really not very complicated. Um, one, you got to have pretty good football players because there's not a lot of deception here. Um, and we like to think it's if we come off the ball strong and fast and play aggressively, um, that we'll get this, this isolation block. And if this is a good, tough football player and, 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 a, and he's a good runner, we can get some movement. But what really makes this play work is these guys right here. Okay, always forgotten are the linemen. Um, and these are our backside linemen. We call them backside because they're away from the side that the play, ball is going to. Um, and their rule, okay, is what we call zone blocking. Okay, they're going to zone everything um, on the backside. Um, and what zone means is each, each, each lineman is responsible, okay, for a zone. All right, and, and whoever comes into the, their zone. And in this case, since it's, it's blast right, we're going to zone to the right, which means the center is going to be responsible for anybody okay, in the zone to his right. Okay? The guard's going to be responsible for whoever's in the zone to his right, and the tackle's going to be responsible for whoever goes into the zone their right. And so when we talk about zone blocking, these three guys, what they're going to do, in this case, it's pretty obvious the way they're lined up. Okay? That the center, the guard's going to block him, okay? The, the center is going to block here, and the tackle is going to block here. Well, what makes zone blocking so great is it doesn't really matter where these guys line up. All right, it doesn't matter what kind of alignment we get; we can still zone block them. We could get a guy here, okay? We could get a guy here, and we could get a guy here. All right. Well, if this is the case, it's pretty obvious. He's going to protect that zone. He's going to work step here, and in all likelihood, pick up that backer, and he is going to come here. And so essentially what we've done is try to simplify it for all the different alignments that we're going to get. Um, that they, They're going to be responsible for a zone. These guys are going to block their man here. And hopefully we get the isolation play that we do um, and give the tailback some room to run. Hope that helps. Thanks. This exclusive presentation of Football 101 is brought to you by EndZoneCamera.com, the most efficient and affordable end zone camera system on the market. Great segment there from Coach Burnett, and it's always fun to learn football from these guys. I think this is one of the best new segments we've ever had here on this show. I'm pretty excited about it. We've got a lot more, folks. We've been, we've been getting these kind of ready to go for you here, so stay tuned for more exciting football 101 coverage here. All right, time now for our picks of the week, and we dive in. We've got some games for you now, tough games. Bruce last week actually beat our producer, Helene Shane. That has not happened in almost four years, Bruce. Would you like to talk about this this moral victory of yours? You didn't beat me, but you beat Miss Shane here, who has rarely lost to you over the years. Helene, there it goes. It took him about 10 seconds into the pick segment before he told us how great he did last week. No, I'm not going to sit here and gloat about it. It's one week out of, what, 11 weeks? You, but you've spent off the, off the camera gloating about it, so I don't want to hear about that. I how about killed you, you last year. Taylor, what happened to you last, last week? I, I was too bold. I mean, I was yeah. making some picks that were just way over the top. Now, if, I, if they would have turned out great, I would have looked like a genius. Because, I mean, year one, I made the pick, Chantilly over Stonebridge. What did I get called? Crazy. Taylor, you don't know anything. This is year one. <laughs> People I, call I was, you And then last year, player. I almost, or no, yeah. that was two years ago, too. Almost broad run over Stonebridge. People called me crazy then. This year, well, I guess I'm a little crazy. You were very crazy the other day. You, you were actually <laughs> really crazy the other day. But, but maybe you have a chance to rebound here this week. As always... Uh, Chris Barassa, our, our color commentator on the game of the week, is the guy you got to watch out for. But we didn't give him the picks this year for the first couple weeks because we wanted to get him down a few games. So we'll, we'll see if we'll allow him to play this week. All right. You ready for game one? Roll. You ready? Game one here this week. It's the Chantilly Chargers taking on the Madison Warhawks. Two teams experiencing different things in week one. Madison on the wrong end of a, of a tough loss and – Certainly uh, Chantilly with a big 61-22 win over Lee. Thursday night game, can Madison rebound here and shock the Purple Nation? What do you think? No. Not happening? You take taking Chantilly? Chantilly all day. The one thing that concerns you is the big plays that Madison gave up, and that's what Chantilly does well. I mean, listen, Oakton's good. They've got quality players. Chantilly's got quality athletes the same way. This is going to be a tough game for Madison to win. We'll see if the Warhawks can rebound, though. Never know. Game one to game two. A lot of times teams make good improvements. All right, next ball game here. 
Herndon, tough, tough loss to open the season to Mount Vernon. They were close. This is a couple-point game here, and they're right there. They're, they're on the edge of turning the corner. West Springfield, hey, bottom line is there's some excitement down there with Jason Eldridge and his club. They're hosting Herndon here on Thursday night. Who are you liking this game? This is actually a preview of what's to come in the rest of the picks if you pay attention. It's the only home team I'm picking in the whole night this week, West Springfield. You taking take West home. Springfield. Herndon, different team on the road than at home. Yeah, I'm going to take West Springfield. I think Herndon, we talked about it last week, a lot of the Ings, well, they're building, they're, they're getting there. I think West Springfield, like you said, there's a lot of excitement down there. I think it's for good reason. West Springfield with the win. Uh, I tell you what, this is tough. This is a tough one for me. I, I don't know how good West Springfield is, and I don't know if we should not think Herndon's pretty good because Mount Vernon's an improved football team. Coach Wells has a great thing going out there. I, I think you got to look at that a little bit. I'm going to go out of the limb here, Hornets, and I'm taking you in this one. Don't disappoint me. I saw him in person. I think Lamique Bumbry is going to be one of the best stories here as a running back this year. So I'm, I'm going I'm going with Herndon. I think they get their first win here in this ballgame. All right, next ballgame here. Battlefield at Freedom Prince William. Now, if I said to you, Bruce, who's the 2-0 and o team? Who's the 1-1 one one team? Who would you say? I think Freedom's the 2-0 and o team. Well, they are. You, it's because you cheated. But the bottom line is, if we had said that at the beginning of the year, you probably would have said Battlefield would be the 2-0 and o team, right? I, I would have. But with all due respect, you could take both Freedoms in the area, combine them, and they still wouldn't be Battlefield. <laughs> So you're taking you're taking Battlefield. Battlefield has to be hurting a little bit after that tough loss to Forest Park. That was a shocker. What do you think? They, they're I gonna think Battlefield is going to bounce back. I really do. I, I I think that they are not a team that goes on losing streaks. They're just not. I, I want to pick Freedom Prince William because I I feel like Coach Worth is doing a great job as well down there. But one thing I've learned with Bruce over the years, and this is a long time you know coming, is that you don't pick against Battlefield. You just don't. When you do, you get beat. So I'm taking the Bobcats as well. Stonebridge at Langley. This is this is the rebound game for Stonebridge. Taylor said earlier he feels bad for Langley. But don't sleep on the Saxons right now, folks. I'm telling you, the research is in. Langley has one of the best teams they've had in a long while. Bruce, this is a scary game for Mickey Thompson's crew because if they don't get it together in four days after that defeat from Lake Braddock, they could go down again for the second time in a week. I love Stonebridge when they're scared or when Andy thinks this is a scary game for them. And he's right. It is. It's a situation for them. But Stonebridge doesn't lose games like this. It's like Taylor said earlier. You ever watch a TV show, The A-Team? Not the movie, but the old TV show with Mr. T in it and all the gold and the mohawk and everything like that. What he used to say all the time? He used to say, I pity the fool. I pity Langley. I like that. That was nice. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm taking Stonebridge. <laughs> you are. Yeah, they, I, you got to. I, I don't see Stonebridge losing the Langley. I think Langley it does have a much improved football team. Don't get me wrong. But they're not Stonebridge. Well, when they beat York, Yorktown, I mean, my radar went up. I mean, at MJ Stewart now, he's one of the best players in the area as well. And we didn't talk about him a whole lot. But, I mean, you're, you're talking about beating a team that, you know, has a dynamic play. Here's the question for me in this game. Stonebridge had trouble up front with Lake Braddock. Big guys, physical players. They had trouble blocking those guys. That's what Langley is. That's what they always are. So if Langley's better at the skill positions, which Coach Thompson said they were this year, that's that's a scary thing for this team. I do think Stonebridge rebounds, but this game is going to be like all of them with the Saxons. It's going to be close. It could come down to a field goal, special teams late in the ball game. So take the Bulldogs, but eh, I'm not feeling real good about this one. All right, Tuscarora at Loudoun Valley. Coach Burnett's team on the road, taking on Loudoun Valley Thursday night. Bruce, who do you like? You know, we, we talked about the western end of Loudoun County and the emerging rivalry between Tuscarora and Woodgrove. Well, Tuscarora is on the far side of Leesburg, on the west side of it a bit, and you have Loudoun Valley out there, the, the what, fourth oldest school, third oldest school in, in the county out here. or Actually, I'm sorry, second oldest school in the county. And kind of maybe the forgotten school up in that end of the county. Don't think they don't like that. Don't think they don't know about that. And I'm not real happy with that. Loudoun Valley's not going to be the forgotten school for long. But they're not there yet ready to take Tuscarora. I think Tuscarora wins this game. I think Tuscarora is going to take this one, too. They're a team that is not just going to go on a tear in the regular season. I mean, I really do believe that they're a dark horse in that Potomac district. Got to take Tuscarora with the win. Yeah, there's one guy that changes this whole game, and it's Noah Rymers. If Noah Rymers was playing for Valley, I'd take Valley. If Noah Rymers was playing for the, the San Diego Chargers, I'd take the Chargers. <laughs> I mean, the bottom line is 
Noah Rymers is the difference in this ball game. He's an incredible football player. Folks, if you're needing something to do on a Thursday, Friday night, whatever it is, go watch number four for Tuscarora. You will get your money's worth, I promise you. All right, next ball game. Kettle Run travels on the road to take on Millbrook here. Hey, uh, this is a, a tough game here for the Cougars. Who are you liking this one? In the old format of single A, double A, triple A, you could say and make the case that Millbrook is the double A version of Robinson, the team that's always getting close, that always seems to be in the conversation, that always seems to have a chance, and always is in position to maybe make a run, but they never seem to do so. Kettle Run, the young program that they are, they've made runs, not just one, but a couple. Take Kettle Run on the road. Yeah, I'm going to take Kettle Run, and this is the reason why. The pioneers out of Millbrook, they had Reed Prosser as their coach for a long time. He's gone. New system, new everything out there in Millbrook. Got to take the Kettle Run Cougars, but it's because of the learning curve with the Pioneers. I think Millbrook will be fine in the cu- in the next couple of years, but right now it's the Cougars. Yeah, great analysis from Taylor. I'm, I'm taking Kettle Run as well. All right, Hanley at Falk here. This might be the game that is the closest of them all. Hanley at 2-0. and We talked about it. The resurgence of the judges is going on right now. They go on the road. Taking on Jamie Carter's club down there at Falk here. This ought to be an exciting ball game here. What do you expect from Hanley and Falk here in this one? I think this could be a great game. This could make a case for the game of the week. And when it's all done and the highlights come out, it may very well prove that it was the game of the week. But I'm going to tell you what. Hanley, one of the premier programs in the whole regional area around here, I don't care what level you're talking about, never down for long. Hanley's been down the past couple of years. They've been vulnerable. They made a statement and made me a believer once again last week. I'm taking Hanley. I'm kind of getting tired with agreeing with Bruce tonight. I mean, I, I, I like the judges. I think that we saw what they are capable of when they put up that late dramatic comeback. And I don't think they're going to have to dig themselves out of a hole this time. I think they're going to come out prepared. It's going to be a close ball game. Falk here is a talented team. They're good. But I, I am going to take the judges. I think this is a year where they are putting it together. All right, I'm, I'm going to go against you guys. I know one thing about Falk here. They've got talent. I really believe this is the game that Hanley slips up. Going on the road, a little different than playing at home. Now, they did go down and beat Harrisonburg last week. Used to be a powerhouse. I don't know if they're the same type of program. This is a tough game here for Hanley. I'm going to take Falk here in a little bit of an upset here. We'll see how that shakes out. It may not be good for me. Hopefully the <laughs> hopefully the Falk here kids will listen and, and play well. All right. Broad run at Heritage. Reed Prosser's club coming off a close loss to Potomac Falls. How about those Panthers, by the way? 2-0 and under Jason Allen. A great deal. Now they get to see Broad run, who's 2-0. and Off to a great start. Who wins this game? I don't think that Heritage can come back from what happened against Potomac Falls last week. And Broad Run, Andy, you talked about it in the early part of the show. Broad Run is one of the teams that look out for them. They're on a roll. They seem to be there right now. I'm taking Broad Run until somebody proves me wrong. Yeah, I think this is one of those cases where it's a matchup between a team that's good in their division – but when they got to go up a level against the guys like Broad Run and all those 5A schools, they're just not quite there. I, I'm going to take Broad Run. I, I think Broad Run is the team to beat. They're putting up 40-plus a game. Look out. Spartans have great athletes out there. Heritage, not quite there yet. I think you're right about them. They're, they're, on, the, they're on the rise. Broad Run's here, though. Look out for the Spartans in this one. All right, Sharando on Friday night heading up to Washington, West Virginia. Washington 2-0 and on the season. Sharando 1-1. One angry a little bit about falling short to Martinsburg. Did they rebound and get a big win? Yeah, I think you're right. It, it, angry is the right word about Sharando. And, and the other word that comes to mind is leadership in that program. They're not going to have that happen two weeks in a row. When they come out of a game, they're the type of program that, that if they leave a game and they thought, man, you know, we let that one get away. Yeah, they almost got they got doubled up, really. It was 27-13, to 13, I believe, last week against Martinsburg. Martinsburg is the best West Virginia has to offer and has been for years. I think Sharando rebounds this week. I think Sharando's going to take the win as well. I think they're going to bounce back. They're going to have a lot of confidence coming into this game, a lot of motivation because, first of all, they don't want to lose two in a row. Second of all, I really do think that this is a team that when they lose, that's just a learning curve for them. That's something that they're going to go into the film room, correct things, and then when they see it out on the field, they're going to be much better because of it. All right, so they both take Sharando. I'm taking Sharando. The Warriors in this series since 2009 have scored 40 or more points every time. That'll happen again here on Friday night, so take Sharando. And that leads us to our game of the week. 
prediction. You ready? Falls Church hosting Thomas Jefferson. Ken Kincaid leading the Thomas Jefferson Colonials. Set Aziz leading the Falls Church Jaguars. We got two coaches who are doing a great job with these programs, by the way. Commend both of them. Something's got to give here. 1 0 versus 1 0. Bruce, who gets the win? I'm looking at this game as my upset pick of the week, and I have about that much confidence <laughs> in the pick that I'm getting ready to make. And I'm taking Thomas Jefferson. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's out of respect for Kincaid. Maybe it's because TJ made the playoffs for the first time in a long time, a year or so, or maybe the year before that. But um, I'm going to take Thomas Jefferson in this one with no confidence whatsoever. I'm going to have a lot of confidence in my pick. Take Falls Church. That's going to be my 10-0 and pick right there for the week. I'm with Taylor on this one. I'm sorry, Coach Kincaid. He's going to be upset with me on, on Thursday night. I, but I am going to take Falls Church, and I'm going to tell you why. i got a couple names for you. Ready? Dion DuPont. He's a tailback. Look out. This guy's he's incredible. Second guy, Jordan Konings. Maybe one of the best receivers in the Northern Virginia area. Watch him. Adam Daly, the quarterback. Strong, strong player. William Mejia. These guys are all playmakers, and they do it on both sides of the ball. Plus, Falls Church has unbelievable size in the trenches. Bruce, you look at film on these guys. I'm telling you, this is a team you're going to have to look out for the playoffs. You heard it right here first. Falls Church might be a playoff team in 2013 with who they have on that roster, and they're all four-year starters. These are all guys that played as freshmen. That matters. Take Falls Church. They win this one. They will not be denied at home with their first game ever in their new turf out of Falls Church. There you go, Bruce. You got that one wrong. That's it for our picks of the week. We're going to send it away to our top ten plays from last week here on the Game Day Broadcast Network. We'll come back and answer your questions here on the Game Day Mailbag right after that. The top ten plays of the week on the Game Day Broadcast Network are proudly presented by Verizon Wireless, the official wireless provider of the Game Day Broadcast Network. As it's going to be second and long for the Chargers. And they'll hand off to the halfback. He breaks up to the 10 with some room up to the 20. To the 30. It's a race down the sideline and he is gone. Got him. Chantilly, 95 yards. David Kearns to the end zone. Touchdown, Chargers. Briarwoods has to be careful not to give up the big play here. Daniel out of the shotgun. Looking to throw, he's got a lot, he's got all day. Now he's going to scramble. Ramey, this is picked in the middle. Larko, he's going to go down the far sideline. Green grass and high tides in front. Nobody's going to catch Chris Larko for six. Here's the punt. Fielded by Navon Burns at his own 21 yard line, kind of backpacks, backtracks. Gets a block behind him. He's got some running room now out to the 40, the 45, the 50, 45, 40, and he is gone. Kiss him goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Touchdown, Westfield Bulldogs. Devon Burns, 80 yards for the score. Getting Carollo in motion. There's the snap. They're going to hand it off this time to Reimers. Reimers running off tackle, still on his feet. And there he goes, past the 50, the 40, the 30. Past the 20, 10, 5, touchdown Huskies! Oh, if he gets to the second level, he's gone, no question about it. Noah Reimers, a 63-yard touchdown run. Melvin Holland Jr. inside the 10, far sideline, up the middle. He's got some room! He is gone! Melvin Holland Jr. Nobody's going to catch you, son! All away for six! Quick strike! Two fifty-two to go, opening quarter. Hand off Turner. Big hole left side. Turner's straight ahead. Turner's in midfield. Turner is running away from the defense. He's gone. Turner at the 10. Goal line. Touchdown, Wildcats. 83-yard touchdown, the Concord SST. Speed, strength, and touchdowns. That's what A.J. Turner does for this team. He just showed why he is one of the best players in the state of Virginia. 
Adams, Henderson back to pass, chucks it down the sideline, caught, touchdown Alexander, oh my, what a great catch. You know, I haven't seen a quarterback that can cover him, and he is... Six foot three, 210 pounds, and he's fast. He's got great hands. What do you do? Eisenhower has the ball teed up. Nice boot into that one. It's going to be Turner watching it bounce. Picks it up at the 12. 15, 20. Turner makes the move. 30, 40. Turner midfield trying to outrun Eisenhower. A.J. Turner is gone up the near sideline. Turn on the Jets and find the end zone. That is one special football player right there, A.J. Turner. Again, he got some good blocking early on in that return. He saw the lane. He got outside, and when it's only the kicker to beat, unless you're a kicker who happens to run about a 4-5, or five, you're not going to catch A.J. Turner, Concord, SST. White, they're going left to right on the left hash marks. Three receivers far side for Murray. He's looking, he's back. He's at the 50, scrambling a bit. Now he's at the 45. The Chargers still scrambling back up to the 50. He's going to run this one, it looks like. Chargers all over him. Now he's going to throw. He throws up. He has a guy open. It's caught at the five. What a play. Touchdown. Lancers, what a play by Murray. Jonathan Walters with the reception. Long snap guy, takes a snap, fakes the handoff, rolling left, looking, looking, gets hit, and the ball's picked off. Ball's picked off to the return to the 50, to the 40, to the 35, 30. Gets knocked out of bounds. No, he does not go into the 10, 5. Touchdown, Oak and Bubba Lamb. Number 26. How about that, Packy? Thank you for watching the Verizon Wireless Top 10 Plays of the Week on the Game Day Broadcast Network. For more coverage of Northern Virginia high school football, visit us online at gamedaymagazine.com and join the network today. We hope you enjoyed our Top 10 Plays there presented by Verizon Wireless. We thank you for watching that segment every week. You can check it out by itself right here online at gamedaymagazine.com and on our YouTube channel here. All right, time now for the game day mailbag. Last week we told you that we were going to send out some shout-outs to you and let you interact with us here. Well, we already got some good questions that came in on our Twitter handle. You can do that every week now from here on out. At GBN Mobile is our Twitter handle. Make sure you follow us there and tweet us for these questions. Time now for the mailbag. Taylor, what do we have? Here, All right. we have? First one up is from at MaxK48Beast. Sounds like a football play. What do you think of the Fairfax Rebels? I'll let Bruce answer this one. Go ahead, I didn't Bruce. know we had YouTube thingy. Yeah, we have YouTube. We have we a YouTube, YouTube thingy, thingy. <laughs> and yeah, we have Twitter too. Yeah, love the Rebels. Have since the rain game of several years ago. I always like that. Probably just I'm still waiting for them to get there though. Love them. Well, they're going to get there this year. I mean, Nick Scott. He he was our athlete of the week this week. Player of the week, and, and for good reason. I mean, 200 plus, almost 278 yards total offense. Had a 75 yard touchdown call back. I mean, this guy's a premier player. And Fairfax will win a lot of games because of him, but also because of the supporting cast. And I think Coach Simons has done a great job with this program. Watch the Fairfax Rebels. Tell, I'm telling you, you heard it right here. Watch them. I, I love the way they're playing right now. All right, next one up is from at the D.C. Sports Fan. And I like this question because this is something where you really got to think about it. There's so many great running backs this year, but who are your top five guys? Whew, I mean, this is tough. This is a unique year, I think, for running backs. It really is. I mean, we've had years in the past where we've had one or two, maybe three or four guys. We might have ten guys that deserve to be on this list, but I'll narrow it down well, to let, five. Well, let me ask you this yeah. question, though, Andy. Is this one of those lists, though, where you you start with A.J. Turner and yes. everybody else is fighting for second place? I, I'm starting with A.J., but I'm telling you, it's not one and then two. It's 1A, 1B, 1C. There, there's guys that have just as much talent. I just mentioned one of them. I'd go A.J. Turner. He'd be my number one guy. I'd go Nick Scott, number two. I would go M.J. Stewart, number three. I would take Tyler Thrasher, Walker, 
and Joe Wilson as my four or five. You can flip those two guys. And you might put Joe Wilson at number one. I mean, he, he's that good. But that's how I have my top five. And then that excludes Noah Rymers. I mean, what that guy's doing is unbelievable. And Javon and, Purvis. And, and Javon hit, Purvis. It, it's it, Sterling it, Daly. If I mean, the Raiders would just give Purvis the ball once in a while in a game instead of going after <laughs> being pass happy, feed this kid to Rock and he'll take you to the promised land. There's a lot of great tailbacks. But, again, I go Turner, Nick Scott, MJ Stewart, Joe Wilson, Tyler Thrasher, Walker. I think those are the five that probably scare defensive coordinators more than anything. Great question, by the way. Great question. All right, next one up is from at D Littlesler. I think I said that right. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot of. That's a lot of synonyms there. All right, with the new VHSL alignment, we'll teach you to read by next show. But go ahead. <laughs> that's D Little Senior. D Little. Oh wow. <laughs> I'm about as new to this as Bruce is with Twitter. With the yeah. new VHSL alignment, it's possible that the Stonewall Jackson versus Hilton matchup was a preview of the 6A title game and how. Well, it, it <laughs> could happen. It no could can. happen. Yes, it can no because can. they're on different sides. It yes, could. they are. Hilton is in but. 6A South. They have to go through the beach area to Wait get minute, back. Wait a minute, how can Hilton be in the – see, I, I thought it wasn't impossible because I thought they are on the same side. No, they're not on the same side. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's You're what sure saying. about that? I'm positive about okay. that. Hilton is on the south end of 6A, whereas Stonewall is on the north end up here with all the Concord teams. So in reality, yes, it could happen. It ain't happening. It's not happening. Now, there's there's a couple good reasons why it's not happening. It's called Oscar Smith and Centerville, or Lake Braddock. <laughs> that, those are the reasons. But in theory, it could. And that is a kind of a unique thing where you have teams up here. They're not that far from each other, but they play in opposite sides of the bracket. So I guess there has to be a line somewhere, and, and the line must go somewhere between Manassas and Dumfries. Yes, I, I think that that's exactly what we're saying. But it, it could possibly happen, which would be kind of unique. Never know. Hey, Hilton's a great football team. So is Stonewall. I mean, they, they could both get back there. All right, next one Top up. Tour, it's though. kind of kind of ironic that this is a question that was asked. We did talk about this a little bit, guys. It's at, from at Nova High School Football. Centerville seems to be the most dominant team in Northern Virginia. Does Westfield have anything to say about that, Bruce? Absolutely, one hundred and fifty million thousand percent, they do. Look out! Was it you, Taylor, earlier on the show that said, you know, Westfield's not getting a lot of publicity right now and not a lot of talk or a lot of chatter about them they like it that way westfield's coming out of nowhere you watch this you tell again i make this point almost every week you're probably getting sick of hearing it go back to 2000 when westfield and stonebridge opened you won't find more successful programs westfield yeah centerville look out what's happened to westfield in the playoffs the last two years what what can i say centerville can i say west springfield okay Westfield, now it's their turn to turn around and go the other way. Listen, I'm going to say this about Westfield. You never count the Bulldogs out. That's what okay? I'm trying to say. I just I know, I'm didn't gonna help get it out right. I'm going to help you because you confused me and I was, I'm on your side. But the truth is is that Westfield will have something to say about it, but I don't know what they say will really matter when it's all said and done <laughs> because I think the Centerville team is the premier team this area has seen in a long time. You know, look back at 011 when Centerville beat Westfield in the Northern Region Championship game and then went on to the state title game. They got beat by Oscar Smith. This team for Centerville is way more talented than that team. Sorry, Connor Coward and Manny Smith and Kenny Canham. Love you guys, man. This team is better, okay? They're, they're better on defense. They have more depth. They're better on offense. They have more weapons. Quarterback play, tremendous with Scott Walter. I don't think he gets enough credit. Westfield has a lot of the same kind of players, but then they start running out of them at key positions. Guys that have tons of experience, they don't have that at quarterback. They don't have the line play that they've had in years past. Not yet. Now, maybe it comes along. They don't play Centerville till later in the year, so maybe. But Westfield is the one team that typically plays Centerville, X's and O's wise, the best out there. And they have been able to beat Centerville because of that. I'm just... I'm not going to let anybody come into this one. I believe Centerville is the number one team. Westfield, I have a chance to have a say, but it, it's on Centerville to lose that one. That, that's my opinion. I, I, don't think, I don't think anybody's going to beat them in this area. It's just my, my personal take. 
Chantilly people aren't going to like that either, but they're that good. That's it, right? That's it. Mailbag's empty. Hey, mailbag is empty, and folks, we're out of time. We are out of time here on the Game Day Broadcast Network for this week's edition of Game Day All Access. Again, tweet us your questions each week. Make sure you tune in on Thursday night. We've got six games for you right here online at gamedaymagazine.com and a couple more on Friday. You guys have a great week. For Bruce Bornart, Taylor Jensen, we'll see you next time here on the Game Day Broadcast Network. I'm Andy Hayes. Take care. The Game Day Broadcast Network is proud to present high school football. This exclusive broadcast is being powered by Integrated Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy. Get back in the game, the game of life. Manhattan Pizza, now serving Ashburn, South Riding, and Leesburg with the best dang pizza in the world. Verizon Wireless, the official wireless provider of the Game Day Broadcast Network. Diamond Sports Training, train with DST Performance today. Bellator Sports Memorabilia, the premier sports memorabilia store in Northern Virginia. EndZoneCamera.com, the most efficient and affordable end zone camera system on the market. The Spine and Joint Health Center, offering patients superior results-oriented care. Proudly serving Northern Virginia with the finest spine and joint care. Quarterback University, take your skill to the next level and enhance your future today. By Max Muscle Sports Nutrition. Max Muscle, partners in health. Atlanta Bread Company of Sterling. Come for the food, stay for the culture.